Jesus explains how you can avoid the fires of purification. Jesus says, My heart for you, my people, is that in the hour of your death you fly heavenward, unimpeded, straight into my waiting arms, that you eat the fruits and herbs of the trees along the river of life and are fully healed and restored from the damage done to you on earth. I want every one of you to see me face to face, but this cannot happen clearly and completely until the layers of film from sin are washed clean. Each day I come to you with the things that must be changed in your nature by an act of your will. I shower you with love and affirm you, so that, strengthened, you can avoid occasions of sin. I love you tenderly, so that you can in turn change your anger and rancor to love for others and avoid the fires of purgatory. But if you will not come to me each day and spend the time necessary for these healings to take place, you will walk out the door and continue to offend one another, because you are lacking in compassion and love. You are lacking because you are not putting the right priority on being with me, one on one. When that day comes, the day of your departure from earth, stripped of all earthly distractions and sensations, you will stand before my mirror and see every imperfection and habitual pattern of sin. You will feel your lack of love and your anger keenly and recognize yourself as being full of the toxic poison of rancor, greed, lust, and so many other sins that you have allowed to take root and live in you. You have known those things were there, but he didn't realize that a time would come when you, not I, would have to work through them to pass through the gates of heaven. Oh, what a day that will be! Glorious for those of you who wept over your shortcomings and sins. Because though you may have been weak and fallen before coming to heaven, if you were resolute and daily conquering yourself, mercy will be extended to you. It was your resoluteness, backed by action, that gained the pardon. But for others who have been avoiding that day, it will be terrible. You will shake before my mirror and want to run and hide. So filthy will you appear to yourself and all in heaven. Please, please make it the number one priority to spend deep prayer time with me and repent for your indiscretions. Repent and repair the damage you've done to other souls. Come to me asking for the grace of true contrition and mercy. I, on my part, will do what I can to bring you along to the state where you can finally be with me and the saints in heaven. But, my children, you must pass through the fires of remorse for your habitual sins you have refused to conquer. These cannot come with you into heaven. They must be completely overcome. I know that you who are from a Protestant background are going to kick at this teaching and this reality. But should I refrain from giving it to you because others lied to you and did not form your conscience properly? Or should I give you the opportunity to change while there is yet time for you? I love you dearly. I cannot withhold the truth from you, lest you incur greater depths in your lives. When I told the parable of the guest at the wedding feast, I mentioned that one was improperly clad. That one had not put forth any effort to correct his faults and repair the damage he did to others. That is why he was excluded. And so, you can ascertain from this that you will not be taken in the rapture, unless you have either conquered your faults or are sincerely committed to conquering them every day, in which case you will be sure to receive mercy and come with me. I love you, beloved brides. I love you so tenderly as I see you struggle each day to overcome temptations and sins. You bring great joy to all of heaven with your commitment to be mine and mine alone. Oh, how I cherish you. This was the end of the Lord's message through Sister Claire from May 14th, 2019. And here is a confirmation for this from another source. 
I say to you during this period, do not accept the idea of hell that humanity has accepted. There is no more hell in this world other than the life that man has created with his wars and hatred. And in the spiritual valley, there is no fire other than the great remorse that the spirit feels when its conscience shows it its errors. Fire is the symbol of pain, of the regrets and repentance that torment the spirit. Purifying it as gold is purified in the crucible. In that pain is my will, and in my will is love for you. From the Third Testament, Revelations of Jesus Christ, Chapter 27, The Beyond. Jesus explains the fires of purification. You choose, here on earth or in the beyond. Jesus says, No one can plumb the depths of my mercy and predict who will be detained in the purifying fires and who will not. This is one reason why my Father is taking so long to give the word for the rapture to begin. I do not want to see any of my brides excluded from the wedding feast because they were detained for purification. Yes, there will be some who will, but the ones who are willing to suffer and work hard on their faults, they will come with me to the wedding banquet. This is another reason why I told the parable of the wedding feast and the man improperly dressed. His sin had worn his clothing treadbare, filthy and unfit for a celebration. He had a long habit of not repenting, and therefore he was unfit for the feast. He was saved, though, by his confession of me as his savior. But the others came to me each day and wept over their sins, begging me to deliver them and doing many acts of reparation, not only for their sins, but for the sins of others. You ask, what is reparation? It is the soul who sees the evil that is done in the world and is struck to the core by insults against me, abortions, dishonest governments, and all manner of unrighteousness. And there are those who are so united with me, when I grieve, they grieve. And in this way, they are repairing the damage of those who sinned against me. And that brings me comfort. There is no pat answer as to whether or not you will need purifying. But if you love me with all your heart, your mind and your strength, and love your brother as yourself, you have very little to worry about. Rather, you will constantly be aware of temptations, faults and lapses, and you will repent immediately. Remember, my heart is a heart of mercy, and I see every teardrop you cry over others and cry over your sins. And though you are weak, I am full of mercy for you because of the way you have been merciful to others. Purify yourselves, my brides, especially in this hour from sloth, which hurts the entire body and deprives them of the nourishment you could have given if only you had tried a little harder. This was Jesus' message through Sister Claire from May 20th, 2019. Purification in the Beyond The Judgment of the Spirit by Its Own Conscience When the spirit of some great sinner departs from this material life to enter the spiritual valley, it is surprised to discover that hell, as it had once imagined, does not exist and the fire of which it was previously told is nothing more than the essence of its works harshly judged by its conscience. That eternal judgment and enlightenment which exists in the midst of the darkness that surround the sinner will be more painful than the strongest fire you could have imagined. But it is not a torture prepared beforehand as a punishment for the one who offended me. No. This torture originates when one begins to understand his own mistakes, when the spirit begins to feel great sorrow for having offended the one who created him and for not having made better use of its time and of the many gifts it received from its Lord. Do you believe that I should punish those who, by their sins, offend me, when I know that the sin offends more he who commits it? Do you not see that who the sinner does evil to is himself, 
that I will not increase the misfortune he has worked upon himself by punishing him. I merely allow them to see themselves and hear the inexorable voice of their consciences interrogating and answering them, to recover the spiritual memory that in the material form they had lost, and to remember their beginnings, their destiny and their promises. There, in that judgment, they will feel the effects of the fire that exterminates their evil and that recasts them like gold in a crucible, separating them from that which is harmful or superfluous, and all that is not spiritual. When a spirit stops to listen to the voice and judgment of its conscience, verily I say to you that at that moment it finds itself in my presence. That moment of rest, of serenity, and of clarity does not come to all spirits at the same time. Some readily enter into that self-examination, and in so doing avoid much grief. For while they awaken to reality and recognize their errors, they prepare themselves and are ready to repair even the last of their bad deeds. While others, blinded, be it by vice, by some resentment, or for having lived an existence of sin, delay coming out of their blindness. Others, more dissatisfied, believing they have been torn from the earth before time, when all smiles upon them, curse and blaspheme, delaying their ability to free themselves from confusion. And like these, there are a great number of cases that know only my wisdom. You shall have to answer for all, and the more evil your works, the more energetic the judgment you shall receive from yourself. For I do not judge you. That is false. It is your own spirit in its lucid state that serves as both your fearful prosecutor and your terrible judge. It is I who defend you against the confusion and who absolve and save you, because I am the love that purifies and pardons. Think that very soon you will be in spirit, and that which on this earth you have sown will also be what you reap. The passing from this life to the other does not fail to be a strict and severe judgment for the spirit. None escape that judgment, even he who considers himself the worthiest of servants. My will is that, from the moment you enter that infinite dwelling place, you cease to feel the anguishes of the earth and begin to feel the sweetness and pleasure of having climbed another step on the path. The final judgment, as interpreted by humanity, is an error. My judgment will not be of an hour nor a day. It has weighed on you for some time. However, I tell you truly that the bodies of the deceased are dead and have returned to integrate themselves in their own nature. For what is of the earth shall return to the earth, just as the spiritual shall seek its dwelling place which is in my bosom. Yet I tell you also that in your judgment you will be your own judges, for your conscience, knowledge and intuition will tell you to what point you are worthy and which spiritual dwelling you should inhabit. You will see clearly the road that you must take, for upon receiving the light of my divinity you shall recognize your acts and judge your own merits. In the spiritual valley, there are many confused and disturbed beings. Bear my message and light to them when you enter there. You can practice that form of charity starting now by means of the prayer with which you can establish communication with them. Your voice will resonate in the place where they reside and will make them awaken from their deep slumber. It will make them weep and cleanse themselves with their tears of repentance. In that instant, they will have received a ray of light, for in that moment they will understand their past vanities, their errors, and their sins. How great is the pain of the spirit when the conscience awakens it, how it then humbles itself under the gaze of its supreme judge. How humbly then spring from the intimate depths of its being petitions for forgiveness, promises and blessings of my name. There, the spirit recognizes that it cannot approach the perfection of the Father, 
and directing its gaze to the earth, where it did not know how to make use of its time and the opportunity for it to come closer to its goal, asked for another period of flesh to atone for its faults and complete unfulfilled missions. Who then performed justice? Was it not the spirit itself that formulated the judgment? My spirit is a mirror in which you must look at yourselves and which will tell you the state of purity you maintain. When your spirit leaves its human shell and in the sanctuary of the spiritual life recollects in its inner depths to examine its past and the results of it, many of its acts that here in the world had seemed perfect to it, worthy of being presented to the Lord and deserving of some reward, seem small in the instant of that meditation. The spirit will understand that the meaning of many acts that in the world seemed good to it were mere traces of vanity, of false love, of a charity not felt by the heart. Who do you believe has given to the spirit the enlightenment of a perfect judge in order to judge itself? The conscience, which at that hour of justice will seem to glow with a clarity never seen before, will be who tells each one which from its works on earth was good, just, real, and true, as well as what was evil, false, or impure that it sowed along the way. The sanctuary of which I have just told you is that of the conscience, that temple that none may profane, the temple in which God dwells, and from which His voice and His light issue. In the world, you have never known how to enter that inner sanctuary, for your human personality always seeks the way to evade that wise voice that speaks inside each man. I tell you that when your spirit puts aside its shell, it will finally be able to stop before the portal of that sanctuary to prepare itself to enter, and before that altar of the spirit, prostrate itself, listen to itself, examine its works in the light that comes from the conscience, and hear speaking within itself the voice of God, as Father, as Master, and as Judge. No mortal can imagine, in its full solemnity, that moment through which each must pass, in order to know what good you bear within, and how to conserve it, and that which you must reject, because it cannot be carried any more within the Spirit. When the Spirit feels itself to be in front of its conscience, and the conscience makes itself present with the clarity of truth, that being feels without the strength to hear itself. It wished it had never existed, because in an instant all its life passes before its eyes, what it left behind, what it possessed, and what belonged to it, and that for which it must now finally account. Disciples, humanity, prepare yourselves in this life for that instant, so that when your spirit presents itself at the threshold of the temple of the conscience, you do not make of that temple a courtroom. For the spiritual pain would be so great that there is no physical pain comparable. I wish you to meditate on what I have said to you in this teaching, so that you understand how your judgment is carried out in the spiritual realm. In this way, you will vanquish the image that exists in your imagination of a courtroom presided over by God in the form of an old man, placing on his right his good children so that they may enjoy heaven, and to his left the bad ones so that they may be condemned to eternal punishment. It is time already that the light comes to the highest part of your spirit and your understanding so that the truth may shine in each man and he be prepared to enter the spiritual life with dignity. From the Third Testament, Revelations of Jesus Christ, Chapter 28, Awakening in the Beyond.